want them to be, I want us to hit rock bottom. I don't think people do that. I don't think people look in the mirror and say, you know what, in three years from now, I want to be bankrupt. People don't do that, right? They don't look in the mirror and say, you know, two years from now, I want to be totally addicted to drugs. I want to be totally addicted to alcohol. People don't do that. They don't look at their life and say, you know what, I want to destroy my life. Now, there may be some out there that are sort of self-destructive people, but most normal people don't do that. Chances are you never plan to wreck your life. We don't. We don't set out to do that. The problem is you also don't plan not to. I think that's our biggest problem. You know, what we've been doing over the last several weeks, if you've been here with us, We've sort of been thinking about the power of decision making. And remember my one thing I've told you is this. Your decisions determine your direction and your direction determines your destiny. Now I know I've been staying on this for several weeks, but I need us to get this and I hope you do. And every week I've been trying my best to cover a different subject because decisions matter. And I've asked you this question over and over again. When you look at your life, do you like the direction that you're going? When you look at your life, just think about your life one year from now. Think about your life two years from now. And look at the direction you're going. And look where you're headed. Is that where you want to go if you continue down the pathway that you're on right now? Just think about it. Because sometimes we can look at the decisions we're making, look at the bad things that we're doing, and if we look, if we're smart enough to be able to look into the future and see where we're going to end up, you may be surprised at what, you may be surprised where you're headed. And hopefully you'll be wise enough to say, you know what, the direction I'm going in my life is not where I want to end up. And the only way to change direction is you've got to change your decision making. You've got to make different choices. You know, I can think of times, I've done some stupid things. I know probably most of you haven't. Have anybody here ever made some really dumb decisions? I'm just curious. I know I have. I remember when I was in college over at ETBU, just a few, few miles from here, 30 minutes from here. And you know, we were all in the dorm. We were all visiting. And in, the, in this dorm, there's this huge glass, right? A huge glass that you can see outside. So a bunch of us guys, we knew we'd heard that a storm was coming through, Debbie. We knew it was coming, right? And all of a sudden, the wind started, it started shaking the whole building, April. And you know what we did? We ran to the window to look outside. And when we ran to the window to look outside, guess what? A tornado came through at that time, blew the window in. And I stood in there. That's the first time I was able to fly in the air. I was there, it lifted, literally lifted me up and put me down. I'm telling you, it was the dumbest, not the dumbest decision I've ever made, but it's one of the dumb things that I've done. And we all make these dumb, dumb decisions, right? And we wonder, why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep making the decisions that we're making? Why do we keep making the choices that we're making in our life? So, and that's kind of what the whole basis of what we're talking about is what we're building this whole thing on. You know, we talked about being ready. We talked about being faithful. We talked about being consistent. Last week, we talked about being a finisher like Christ was a finisher. Today, we're going to talk on another subject, right? Because here's what I believe. I believe this. I believe decisions won't be based on what feels good at the moment. I don't want to make decisions based on feelings. <coughs> Not that that's a bad thing, but sometimes when you make decisions based on just feelings, sometimes those feelings can take you in a bad way. Because sometimes we can be so enraged. And sometimes it's not good to make decisions when you're enraged. Can I get an amen? Because you're going to make bad decisions, right? I like to make decisions based on a value system. A value system that I've created. So when I get up to that, make that decision, it's based on what I believe. It's what I stand on. It's the values that I believe in, right? It, it determines the decisions I make. Not on feelings, right? Because sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes I get mad. But I base them on the values that I have grown up in my life, the things that I've been working on, the things about when I read the Word and I see God's Word and I understand His promises. And when I understand His promises, it becomes a promise to me. And I begin to make decisions based on that. It's a value system. 
And I think that's what we have to do. We've been talking about making sure that we begin to build those things right now in our life. Don't wait till we get in it. Don't wait till we get in the temptation. Don't wait till we do things, we get in a bad spot and say, well, I better make a decision. You already begin to build those things in your life so when you get there, you're ready. So let me ask you another question. How many here has ever been caught up in a temptation and you made a decision you regret it? Raise your hand. Every hand in this church ought to go up. We've always been tempted by something, we did it, and then we regretted it. I'm telling you, every single person, I can raise both of my hands because I know that I've been in situations where I made those decisions, right? Here's what the Bible says. There's a lot of verses. We're going to cover several of them today. But here's the thing the Bible talks about. Here's what Paul said. He said, be on your guard. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. See, he understood that there were going to be times in your life that the devil was going to get all up in your Kool-Aid and you need to be able to be strong during those times, right? Be on guard because you have an enemy. That's what Paul said. Here's what Jesus said. He said this, watch and pray. Why? Then so why do we need to watch and pray, Jesus? So you don't fall into temptation because your spirit wants to do the right thing. Your spirit is willing. Well, what's the problem? The flesh is weak. That's what Jesus said. He said there will be times you're going to be tempted. And you need to be ready. Be ready for it. So here, I love what Joshua said. He says, have I not committed, commanded you? Be strong, be courageous, be ready. We're about to go into a battle. Be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be strong, be courageous, lean into God. So you ask yourself, I know you're asking yourself now, preacher, why prepare? Why do I need to be ready? Why do I need to be on my guard? Well, I know what Jesus said, but why do I need to do that? Why? Because I can tell you two reasons why you need to be prepared. Here's number one. Number one, the devil is coming for you. Let me say it again. The devil is coming for you. Yep. Here's his mission. The devil has one mission. He's coming for you, and here's his mission. His mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. Don't think you are away from that, that you don't have to worry about that. I want you to know today, the devil is coming for you. He's out to get you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to wreck everything about you. He wants to destroy your position. Everything about you, the devil is out to get you. How many believe that today? How many in here today, the devil's come after you? I'm telling you, he's come after me. And let me tell you, why do you need to prepare? Because the devil is out to get you. Amen? Amen? So there's number one reason. The devil is coming. He's coming. He's coming. And he ain't backing down. That's good. Never mind. You'd have to know the old coach from LSU to know that one. Number two. This is important. The devil's coming for you. You need to know you're not as strong as you think you are. You need to know you're not as strong as you think you are. I know there's you say, man, I don't need this. I can handle it. I got my own thing going. I can, I can do with it. No big deal. The devil can do what he wants to. I'm not worried about it. I got this covered. I ain't, it, it ain't nothing. I can handle this temptation stuff, man. You, you, you can worry about it. But, but that, I ain't going to worry about it because I got it. I like what the scripture says. He says, you think you're standing firm? Be careful because when you are overconfident, those are the people that tend to fall. Yeah. In other words, if you think you're standing firm, be careful so that you don't fall. You know, there's studies out here, right? There's studies that have, that have been covered. I want to lay a foundation real quick and then we're going to get into this. You know, the studies show this. They show that people over overestimate their ability to risk, resist temptation. They overestimate that, right? And there's a word for it called restraint bias. Everybody say restraint bias. Restraint so i got to give bias. me a foundation here to prove what I'm saying is right. Restraint bias. 
You think you can resist more than you think you can, right? So it's like this. Think about this, right? You may not have this issue. It may not be a problem to you, but I'm going to throw it out there because it's something I have to deal with, right? So you're at work, right? If you're at work, right, and somebody brings a chocolate cake into the room and you know who made it and you know it's good. You know that this is the best cake that anybody's ever made, Jackson. It's the best. But you have determined that you're not going to eat it. So you walk by. No problem. The first time around, no problem. Second time around, mm, you know what, Johnny? I'm just going to just taste the icing. But you're strong, right? Restraint. I'm going to handle this. Third time around, man, your face is all in it, right? You got chocolate icing running down your face. It's all up in your hair, right? Because we, we as human beings, we have this thing where we're pretty strong, but we overrate ourselves, and then we put ourselves in a situation, even though the scripture tells us over and over, when you get in temptation, run. You flee from temptation. But what do we do? We go right into it thinking, I can handle this, baby. This ain't nothing. So some of you right now in your own life, your problem is you think you can handle it and you get right where your worst problem is and it gets you because you have a restraint issue. It's just built inside of us. So what I'm saying is you're not as strong as you think you're strong, right? Anybody know any crazy people? No, if you, how many work with crazy people? Becca, don't raise your hand because you work with me. Y'all right. work, work with some crazy people. You ever thought about this? So you're a believer and they know you're a believer, right? And they all up in your Kool-Aid, they messing with you all day. But you restrain yourself, Holly. You don't say nothing, you hold back, right? All day long, every time you see it, it's underneath your skin, right? You won't, you won't to last out. But you're strong. You're strong all day long, and when you get home, you walk in the door and you holler at your spouse. Right? Because, man, you can only handle it so long. You hear me? Y'all know, don't be acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. And that's the problem. The devil is coming for you, and you're not as strong as you think you are. So I'm going to give you three wonderful tips to how to handle temptation. Now, these are right out of the Word of God. And I promise you, you ought to write them down. You ought to write them down because they're going to be powerful. Number one is move the line. Number two, count the cost. And number three is plan an escape. That's your three. Now, don't go home yet because I'm going to go over each one of them. Amen? Amen. You've got to move the line. You've got to count the cost. But sometimes, if you go that road, it's a cost. It may, you may not be willing to pay it. Number three, plan your escape. So here you go. Number one, move the line. You know what would be so awesome? I was thinking about this earlier. It would be so awesome. I thought about this stuff. It would be great if somebody in here today, you know that row of caution tape? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Wouldn't it be great? I was thinking, man, if somebody would oh, show up with that today. Oh, oh I got some. You got some? Got Look you. at that. Wow, y'all give. How does that happen? It's like making a deal, right? You know, anybody got this in their purse? <laughs> and boom, there it is, right? I bet if you ask the ladies, you should probably have one of those little dice, you know, the fuzzy dice. Oh, oh, I got that too. Oh, no way! Look at that. She's got both of them. I got that. Oh, my that. goodness, look at this. You, a, you can have that. It's, it's a Dallas Cowboy and a closet cowboy fan. Right here, right there, cowboy fan. Dallas Cowboy. So we know. Okay, so here's the thing. You want to hold that? <laughs> so what we need to do is we got to move the line, right? So we're going to make a line here so everybody will see it. Whoop! That's all the line I got. Oh, no. No, you got one. Uh, I got a long line. So we're going to lay this right here. We're going to move. We're going to... Here's the line. And here's the way it works, right? So on this side of the line is the bad stuff. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is the center side. And oh, this is where all the bad stuff, the sin stuff is, right? This is where you know if you mess up, you're going to go right here. So you, that should go is to stay away from that, right? But on this side is the good side. Everybody say, I'm on the good side. I'm on the good side. Yeah, you're on the good side, right? So here's the way it works, right? And it's, unfortunately, this is the way it works. And you heard me talk about this before. We know where the line is. And what we keep asking ourselves, it says, I'll give you an illustration, right? So before I met Renee, I wasn't a Christian. There were several years in my life that I was not a good person. So then I got saved, 
God did something great for me. Man, I moved. I decided to go into the ministry. I went to the uh, East Texas Baptist University, and I, I met Renee. I said, man, that's the girl. Right? But I knew that I was a Christian now, and things had to be different. So I called my friend. I said, man, what, what can I do? I want to bump the line, but I don't want to cross the line, right? And can I smell her hair? You know, what can I do? Don't punish your halo. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Right? I want to know how close I can get to the line but not cross over. And that's the way we play the game. How close can I get and still not sin? And you know, for the longest, it's amazing, early in the church, we would teach just the opposite. You heard me tell the story about the guy that had the wagon and he was looking for somebody to drive it. How many heard me tell that story, right? And I told you several times, man, he hired people and he said, man, how close can you get to that line without falling over? And the first one said, I can get this close. The second said, I can get this close one. And the last one said, man, it don't matter how close. I'm trying to figure out how far away can I get from the line. And we used to believe that as a church. It wasn't how close I could get to sin. It's how far away can I get from sin. And we're, today, we're getting the temptation because we're playing with it. We're bumping up against it. I don't want to sin, so I'm going to go right up against it. A lot of times, that's our problem. And you may have problems with certain things, and you've got to figure out how to move the line. If you've got problems, just, I mean, I can name a bunch of things, and I don't want to make you feel guilty. I'll let the Holy Spirit do that. But there may be problems you have. And if it, let's, just, let's just throw up something like, man, if you have problems with going out and drinking and going clubbing and all that stuff, and you know if you go there, you know you're going to blow it. You know yourself. My friend, stop going. Yeah. If people are dragging you there, just talking to y'all, come with us, come with us. Then you need to get away from those people because what you're doing is you're bumping the line. How close can I get? Who cross over, Grace? I figure out how to stay on this side. So the key is this. It's real simple. You just got to figure out how to pick up the line and you got to move it. Everybody want that in here? Now you're all on the good side. See, you've got to figure out how to move that line. You need to get as far away from that line as you can. Man, if you're having trouble with temptations and the decisions you're making are based on the temptation that you're giving it, you're giving into, get away from those temptations. If there's some things that you can handle that are no problem to you, that's okay. But you know where your trigger is. You know where Satan's going to attack you. At. He knows your weakness and he's coming for you. And he knows if he stays in your true life, you're going to finally give in because he knows you've got a restraint problem. He knows you're going to get tired, and before you know it, you're going to blow it. You're going to get mad. You're going to say something you wish you wouldn't have said. Quit hanging. If you, if you got a problem, Godsman, quit hanging out with the Godsman. Man, come on. You've got to run from that stuff. Why do you think the Bible teaches flee from temptation? You don't go and bump up against it. That makes sense? Number two, I'm starting to sweat. Is that hot in here, y'all? Yeah. Oh, it's like fire right here. <laughs> Number two, you've got to count the cost, right? Magnify the cost. You need to do this. Once you get out of way to move it, man, let me tell you, just think about it. I said this earlier, look at your life, the directions you're going, the decisions you're making. Look at yourself two years from now. Magnify the cost. But let me tell you what, I've been in the ministry for 30 years. Man, I love the ministry. I love being here. I love being in this church. I worked hard at doing this. I went to college. Man, I went to got my master's degree. Man, I went back to. I'm teaching right now in one of our in our Louisiana school ministry. I'm not, I mean, I'm having the time of my life. But you know, I can destroy that in five minutes, just like that. All I have to do is be unfaithful in my name. Just like that, it's over. I'll lose my ministry. I'll lose your respect. I'll lose the respect of my son. Let me tell you what. You think sin isn't bad? Sin destroys. That's how the devil plays. Yeah. He's coming for you, and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. 
And let me tell you what, you think playing with temptation is okay, it's not okay. It will suck you in, and before you know it, it will wreck your life. Yep. Don't think, well, you know, I'm so strong. No, you're not as strong as you think you are. Does that make sense? All I'm telling you to do is you need to move the line, and you just need to imagine what the cost would be. Is what you have, is it worth it? Man, if it's worth it, you fight for it. If your marriage is worth it, fight for it. If the person that you love, that relationship, has been broken and you've been holding on to unforgiveness, if the relationship means that much, you fight for it. It's yours. Amen. You do what you need to do to make it work. Yep. If your faith means anything to you, if your faith with God means something, you fight for it. Yep. Don't let the devil take it. Because he's coming for you and he knows you've got a problem with weakness. You need to fight for it. You need to move the line. You need to count the cost. Because let me tell you what. Some of you aren't willing to pay the cost. It's going to break your heart. Right. Why? Because the devil's coming for me. He wants to kill me. And he wants to steal everything that I have. And he wants to destroy me. Number three. I'm almost done. I know some of y'all didn't get home at 2 o'clock this morning. When they went out partying. I just want to say that. We had a, we had a wedding about 1,500 miles from here. We had to drive home last night. <laughs> I no, was in Florida, but it sure felt like that far when we had to drop it. So, here's the last thing. You need to plan an escape. So there's a great story in the Old Testament of Joseph. Not, in not, not the New Testament Joseph. This is the Old Testament Joseph, right? And the Bible describes, if you have a chance, it's in Genesis chapter 39. I'm not going to go up there and read it. The Lord's got me down here. I'm going to stay down here. <coughs> so here's the thing. It talks about Joseph. And the Bible describes him this way. He's good looking and handsome and well built. That's two good things right there, huh? Handsome and well-built, kind of like your pastor. I'm just the opposite of that. Short and not that handsome. But he's that. He was handsome and well-built. Right? That's who he was. Unfortunately, he worked for a guy named Hunter who had a wife that saw that. And the Bible says, man, you look so... The Bible even says, any kids in here... The Bible says she lusted after him. What it says, if you want to, the Bible is up front tells you, man, she wanted him. Go back and read it. I mean, every, I mean, she said, you know, she didn't just lust, she told him, I want you. And you know what he said? He already had a plan, right? He already moved the line. He already counted the cost, right? He said, you know what? You are the wife of my boss. I can't do that. I have a God that I love. My value system is right here. And if I was to give in to you, you would learn the value system that I created. He'd already put it together. He was ready. Uh, he was ready for it. Right? The problem was, the Bible says, she was very persistent day after day after day. Even after he told her that, she still come after him. Look up here. You think the devil's going to stop one time after you tell him I got a value system? The devil don't work like that. He thinks he cares. He will come after you day after day after day after day. He's not going to stop. You know, you know why I'm telling you? You better have something built in your life because he don't stop. So, the, so here's what happened. When he had, he had it together. But one day... He got caught up in the house with her by himself. Yeah. Very good. I didn't, we didn't even have that plan. It was bad. And all of a sudden, she grabs him and tries to lay on him. Right? The Bible says, you know what he did? He said he just, she grabbed a hold of his cloth. Cloth? Cloth? Yeah. His coat. Whatever you want to call it. And he left. He said, man, I'd rather have my value system than my coat. Uh, he left the coat there. He was gone. Man, he had already decided, if this woman does this, I am running. Right? You know what the Bible teaches you? Here's what the Bible teaches you. You've got to move the line, right? Count the cost. Because it can be high. Right? But you plan for an escape. Because here's what the Bible says. The Bible says this. It will not allow you to be tempted behind what you the two of you can't handle. Amen. It doesn't say he's not going to tempt you beyond what you can handle. He said what it'll do is he'll, he won't allow a temptation between the two of you that you can't handle. 
But what he will do, if it gets too tough, he'll provide a way out. So that you can bear it. Did you notice that? He didn't say, so you'd be totally away from it. He said, what do you do? He'll provide a way out. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. Look it up. He'll provide a way out. He'll provide a way of escape. Does that make sense? So when you're tempted, make a plan. Move that line. Get it out of the way. Don't be bumping against it like some of you do it every day. Some of you wait until the weekend and you're bumping the line. Because I know, man, you, you, you know crazy people, and by the time you get home, all you want is a cold beer because you're tired of it. And let me tell you what, you've got to move that line out of the way because you've got to have a value system. Does your walk with God mean anything? Does it mean anything to you? Mine does. I'm not letting the devil, the devil take my values away. I'm going to fight with everything I have. Because you know what I've done? I have counted points. And when the devil comes up against me and tries me to get me to do something I shouldn't do, I think about you. I do. I think about you, Dad. I think about you, Charlie. I think about you guys. I think about you. I think about what would I do? What would you guys do if I fell? It, it breaks my heart. Because it's a memo of the devil fell. But I looked up at him. I can't, I can't live with that. I've counted the cost. I said, y'all mean that much to me. You mean that much to me, Debbie. I've killed it. My family means that. My church means something to me. The ministry that God, it, it means something. And I am going to fight with everything that I have. When the devil comes, and let me tell you, he's all up in my Kool-Aid all the time. And there have been times when I said, man, I can't handle it, Lord. I know you're on my side, but I need some help. And God says, hey, run that way. And you know what I do? <laughs> Which way do I run? I'm coming over here. So get in the good side. <laughs> Church. Then you need to create a system in your life. And that system means I got to figure out, I know I'm going to be tempted. I know that. How do I know it? Because the devil is coming against me. He is. He don't like me, and he knows I get weak. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Well, then I know that he's coming. I'm going to start working on creating a value system. And that value system means I'm going to move the line. I'm not bumping the line anymore. I'm not playing with it because I know that's fire. But I'm going to count the cost and see if it's worth it. It's not. Is it living? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Count it two years down the road. Look at your life. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? It's not. And, and then what you can do is if it's too much, you look for that escape path. God's going to do. You know what our problem is? I think too many of us have a TikTok face. Y'all know what I mean? You know what I mean, don't you? Think? That's it. TikTok face. Man, what do we do on TikTok? We get on there and we look at stuff we can laugh at. You know, when we get finished, we lay it down. Right? Man, if I want to get with somebody that I know, if it's Facebook, if it's, if it's Instagram, whatever, any social media platform, that's sort of like the faith we have, right? Man, when we want to get with somebody that agrees with me, I just jump on there and find somebody that agrees with me. But when I don't need it, I just put it to the side. Man, when I need somebody to give me some love, man, I jump on there, they love me, and then I set it to the side. I don't need it anymore, right? And that's how our faith is a lot of times. We have this sort of TikTok, Facebook faith. And that's what we use it for, is when we can get benefit of us. And let me tell you, that kind of faith isn't going to get you home. And when the devil comes to attack, you're not going to be able to handle it. Because you've used your faith for the wrong reason. You need a godly faith that will hold to you any matter, it doesn't matter what the devil does. Because the devil is coming for me. Everybody say, the devil is coming for me. Everybody say, the devil don't like me. He don't. Everybody say, and I know... I can't, I don't have what it takes. Everybody say that. So what I got to do, I know that my system isn't built that way. And I need God. I need God. Because God's the one that empowers you. He's what gives you what you need, baby, to do all things. I can do all things through what? Through Christ. When I'm in Christ, I say that. And you can do it. I believe in God, man. 
This boy's 16 years old. Now, he ain't a boy no more. He's a man. And April's 27 today. Amen, y'all? Amen. We can do it. I want y'all to stand up. I don't know, Cindy, would you mind? I know you have to come by yourself. Is that okay? She's doing this thing, play a song in the background. Just kind of help you. Oh, so we're going to let her do that. I'm going to pray for you. Maybe, maybe the Lord spoke to you today. Maybe there's some areas that you need to have a conversation with God about. The altars are open. You can make the altar right in front of where you're at. I mean, this whole church is an altar. God's here. Amen. Even wherever you're at. So let, let me pray for you. Dear Father, I do thank you for our time this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for the love that you give us. Lord, we do thank you. Lord, you've given us great principles in your word. Lord, you've showed us things that we need to see. Lord, we, we need to know that we can't play with temptation. We can't play with sin. Lord, we know, some of us know where the line is, and we're trying our best to bump up against it. When the Bible says, man, don't play with temptation, run from it. And today, there's people in our church right here that are standing in this church. They're praying. And their problem has been, that's what they've been doing. They know where their weaknesses are. They know where the devil attacks at. And he knows where their weakness is. And they keep playing with that. And the problem is, since the devil knows it, and he's going to pour everything he has at that. And before you know it, we're going to give in. I'm asking you today to move the line. Just move the line. And I'm not bumping against that anymore. I'm getting as far as away as I can. And you today, that are where you're at, and the temptation has been great, you've been, you've been ready to step over that line, Man, I'm asking you today to count the cost. Count the cost. Is it worth it? Is it worth the road that you're heading down? Count the cost. Man, you have so much that you have around you. Are you willing to lose some of that? You'll find that you're not. Just count the cost. And when it gets too tough, man, just look for that escape route. Because God can give it to you today. I mean, nobody looking around. I gotta ask a question, man. If God has spoken, if God has spoken to you, I want you to raise your hand. Anybody? God has spoken to me today. All right? Anybody? Let me pray for you, dear Father. Man, you see these hands go up. They're all over this place. Mine's up right here with them because I know that I'm always in the midst of these temptations. Man, I know the devil wants me to fail. The devil wants me to fall down. He wants to destroy everything about me. He wants to destroy this church. Lord, he wants to destroy the ministry. He wants to do all that. So, Lord, I pray today you would always help me to count that cost. Help me to move the line. Help me to run when I need to run. Help me, Lord, to let you fight the battles that you need to fight. Lord, these hands are going up because they are in the same spot. Lord, they're brave enough, they're courageous enough today, Lord, to call out to you. God, I pray you would bless them. I pray, God, you'd give them strength beyond measure. Lord, I pray you'd give them a vision, a vision of what you want them to be. Lord, if they're going down roads they shouldn't be going down, Lord, help them to make a decision today to turn completely away from them. Help them to go the opposite direction. Lord, put them on a pathway that you've designed them to be on. Lord, I pray you'd forgive them when they fall short. I know that's what they have to do. Help them to confess that sin. But today, Lord, help them to get their life right before you. And we thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the life that you've touched. For everybody today, Lord, that has been ministered to. God, we make sure we give you the praise. We love you today. Now be with us throughout it. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. You're the author. You're the finisher. And today we praise you. And we pray this thing in the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. All right. And all the time. All right.